Welcome to our next talk at the first day of DevOC 2022. It's about color management. I think this is one of the most famous mysteries in computer science, uh, apart from printers, so that only very few people really understand. So I'm very happy to introduce Amy uh, as our guest today. Amy is uh, from Argentina, Argentina, and this is his first uh, talk at DVOC. He did many of them before, but this is the first time at DVOC. And he is a member of the Krita, Krita development team. So I think many of you know Krita as an application. And well, it's interesting to really get insights from well, a, a core development person that really understands color management. I'm, I'm very excited to learn about that a little bit more. And yeah, so um, as usual, ask questions. Uh, we collect questions in the in the pad. Uh, and so after the talk, we will go through that questions. I'm sure there are some of these questions, uh, as, as I would have many. So um, as usual, uh, yeah, let's start. And um, I will be here and uh, yeah, talk to you later about the questions that are coming in. So Amy, um, handing over to you. Enjoy and uh, yeah, educate us about color management and ICC pro. Thank you, Peter. So, uh, well, you know my name. I'm Amy Spark. I'm part of the Krita development team. And the topic from this talk stems up from something that I found very curious during work and which I call the last frontier on ICC profiles. For uh, some bits about myself, I am a full time contract veteran with KDE's Kritas. I started with a pretty theoretical background on color spaces, but over time I specialized in many things that are well, well, very well course, for instance, in programming or cross platform real systems. For this reason, you will find my posts on a lot of free open source projects over there, for instance, Homebrew, Open Color IO, and so on. If you want to check any of these things out, you can visit my website, which is amyspark.me. So, for the motivation of this talk, you know that I work in Krita, which is a free open source payment application, part of the KDE suite. We provide an aesthetic tool set for artists as well as image manipulation professionals. And our main aim is to support as many platforms and stores as possible. Currently, we support Linux, Windows, Mac OS, and we are working on an Android support. To achieve all this, we need a fairly exhaustive text suite because the main aim is to catch as many errors as possible before the landing productions in order to, of course, save tiers. This is very important because our main branch that will be Krita 5.1 is currently clocking at more than 4,500 C++ and binary objects, which amount to almost a million of lines of code. And this complexity increases very rapidly once you start factoring in the compiler flavors, the library versions, what operating systems we support, what CPU architecture we support, and so on. But the main question is why this, this thing of the test suite is important. This is because until recently, our test suite couldn't test one of the, color, of the many color spaces that we support. And this is an outlier, this last frontier that is called ICBCR. We couldn't test ICBCR because there are simply no free ICC profiles available. If you go around in the internet, you will find only two known instances that are 1996 copyright by some across systems. And for obvious reasons, we can't use them in free open source software. But, uh, oh well. By this time, I expect you will have many questions. For instance, what's ICBCR or a color space? an ICC profile or just well, any of the computing terms that I have used. And this is what I will be answering during this talk. For this reason, I have is, uh, separated into four main sections. First, I will begin telling you the uh, primary on college management. Then I will be introducing you to the ICBCR color space, what it exists and what it is important for Krita. In the third section, I will show you how to turn from a, a ICBCR specification into your own uh, ICC profile. And finally, we will we'll make a brief recap of what we have seen. So for the first section, color management, Abhay Sharma makes a very formal definition. He calls color management the use of hardware, software, and processes to control and adjust color among different devices in a digital imaging system. It's very complicated, so I split it into three main questions. First, 
Why do we need color management as developers and as users? Secondly, how are devices color managed? And finally, how are colors specified in a color management system? For the first question, why do we need color management? The end color management is to achieve formally device independent colors translation. In other words, how do, can I have this blob of color on my screen and look, make it look the same in a printed shop? This is important because each device, be it a printer, be it a screen, be it your smartphone, measures colors in a different way. And formally, given a scene color management, color management's aim is to produce identical representation from different input devices, be it a scanner or be it a camera, and making them look the same on different auto output devices. In this case, a screen or a printed shop. Second question, how are devices color management? We need to answer the three C's of color management. It starts with calibration, which means set your device up to a known, desirable, and most importantly, repeatable state that you can go back to if things go wrong. Secondly, you need to, uh, to do characterization, which is measure how your device responds to color inputs, then describe that response in a device-independent manner, and finally, store it in what we call a device profile, which usually goes along with whatever image the device makes. And finally, the most important step for us as uh, Skrita developers is called conversion. That is simply take the image, take, take the source profile, and transform it to fit the destination profile. Third question, how are colors specified? They are specified as coordinates in what we call a color space. From a geometrical point of view, a color space is geometrical and n-dimensional, one dimension for each channel. That turns light stimuli, what means call the colors that we see, into vector coordinates. If you have that done with development, you have already run that at least across three color spaces. These are RGB, red, green, and blue, HSB, which is hue, saturation, and value. And finally, HSL, which is hue, saturation, and lightness. From a mathematical point of view, a color space is defined as a coordinate system in which we define a subspace. And each supported color will be mapped to a single point inside that subspace. If we think of this of the set of supported colors, that is the color space's gamut. To construct a color space, we need to specify two things. First, a set of three independent reference stimuli that we call primaries. For instance, in RGB, they are pure red, pure green, and pure blue. And secondly, we need to define the white point, that is the color of the light source that were used either in the scene and or in the measurements of the primaries. These colors are represented by what we call chromaticity coordinates. And if we plot this in a chromaticity diagram, the triangle that is formed reveals the space gamut. For instance, this, the sample that we have on the right is the gamut of the ICBCR profile according to one of the specific that we will see in the, in the third section. Now, there are, many, there are two main architectures, but nowadays we use the one that is specified by the, in the International Color Consortium that is called open loop color management. In open loop color management, all the calculations are done in a single space that is called the profile connection space which is an intermediate and device independent color space. Under open loop, each transformation to and from each device is mapped to a single transformation from a, to the PCS. For instance, instead of making pro, uh, a one set of transformation to go, for instance, from a camera to a scanner uh, or from a, a scanner to a printer, we only may define a single transformation from the camera to the PCS and from the PCS to the destination device. Color management architecture, according to this, ICC has four key components. 
First, the profile connection space that we will be using. Secondly, the color management module, that is a software library that does all this hard work, and which usually comes with your operating system, but of course, there are private vendor offerings available. Third, you need a device profile that will be containing all the data to transform between the PCS and your device, and we will, we will be making during this talk. And finally, the rendering intents, because when you map between different color spaces, there can be cases in which you can start from a color space, but there is no equivalent color. And of course, the color management module needs to predictable account for this. So how do we process color values? ICC profiles in the current specification, which is 4.3, have two main ways in which they can process colors. The first one is called matrix plus tone response curves, or TRC. And the second is color, look, color lookup tables. Matrix TRC combines a three by three matrix plus tone reproduction curves, which you can also call gamma curves or OATF that we will see later. This, this uh, specification can only convert RGB, color spaces or grayscale and most importantly, they are not stored directly. You do store the tone sports score for each channel, but the matrix is derived from the coordinate of the three parameters. This is the flow of a device color space to PCS conversion on the matrix plus TRC. You start from the device space. You apply the tone response curve to linearize these channel values. And finally, you apply the uh, uh, matrix to convert from your device space to PCS. And to go from the PCS to the device color space, you need to reverse the direction of the transformation. You start from uh, the profile connection space, you apply, the, you apply the immerse matrix, you apply the inverse tone response curves, and finally, you end up in the device space. The most important thing here is all these calculations are done automatically by a color match management volume. So no, you do not need to make extra effort as a profile designer. Now, the second alternative that I mentioned is color lookup tables. This is designed for n channel color space. For instance, the printer space, cyan, magenta, uh, yellow, and black. Or for more complex color conversion for which a matrix plus TRC is simply not enough. First difference from matrix plus TRC is that each transform direction is explicitly stored into separate tags inside the ICC profile. And also, there are two main ways in which to store this transformation. The first one, which is the standard and also the required version, stores this into 8 or 16-bit outside integer depth. And it's called A to B0 to go from the device to the profile connection space, and B to A0 to go from the PCS to the uh, device color space. Alternatively, you can override this with the flo uh, floating point depth transformation, which is called D to B0 from device to PCS, and B to D0, which is from PCS to device color space. Let's note that this one overrides the transformation defined to B0 only if your college man management module supports it. Now, the integer version H2B0 B2 and B2A0 are what we call color transform structures. This can have up, up to five elements in four possible and fixed way to use them. For instance, for the device to PCS uh, direction, we can use a set of three tones response scores called B, M, and matrix, and B, B M and B are both sets of three tone response curves. This is the most close one to matrix TRC. A, then a color lookup table, then B, again, A and B are tone response curve sets. And finally, the most complex one, but also the most expressive one and the heaviest one in terms of, of storage, which is A, color lookup table, M, matrix, and B. For the PCS to device, you need to reverse the flow of the transformation that I mentioned earlier. It is important to note that unlike matrix plus TRC, this version has a fourth column in the matrix that allows you to apply an offset 
to the transformation. And this is what it looks like when you transform with color lookup table from device to PCS. You start from the device space, you linearize with the set of A curves, there is one for each channel. The lookup table takes the end channel and occurs a set of fixed three channel values. You apply M, you apply the matrix plus the offset, you apply B, and finally you end up in the PCS. To go from the PCS to the device transform, you need to reverse the direction of the transformation and apply all the curves, the inverse curves, inverse matrix, inverse curves, invert the color lookup table, and you end up in finally in the device space after applying A. Now, the alternative, which is uh, D2B0 and B2D0, are floating point color transforms. The first difference that we'll find in specification is that this transformation allows you to use as any component that you want, be it a matrix, be it a tone response curve, be it a color lookup table, as many times and in an any, as any order as you, as you wish. Second difference that you will find is that the viewers that they will be using, for instance, Apple's colors in Viewer do not support them. And the third one that is, will be affecting us the most is that so the supported parametric tone support response curve types are by far less. We will see why this is important in the last section. And the final uh, ingredient of an ICC profile is the illuminal. In this case, ICC profiles are expected to represent all colors under a very fixed source of illumination, which is called illuminant or white point. The AC6 expects you to use, in particular, one which is called D50, which represents theoretically the warmth of the light shortly after dawn or before dusk. But as you may be expecting, many color spaces like ICBCR use other white points. For this case, we need to specify what is called a chromatic adaptation matrix that adjusts the color value from the and specify the luminance to the corresponding one under D50. These are always easily searchable online, and for instance, L. Stone has made a lot of great research on this subject. And this is the equation that is followed. You start from the, from the uh, value in the PCS under the device viewing conditions, you apply the color chromatic adaptation matrix, and you end up with the final value that the ICC expects under D50. Now, for the ICBCR color space, ICBCR is what we call a device independent color space encoding. Device independent is because its specification is fixed into two standards and do not depend on a particular device. Color space, it is because it is a mathematical transformation of RGB. And encoding, it is because it specifies First, the digital encoding method that we will be using, for instance, eight or 10 meters inside the integer as well as floating point. And secondly, it specifies the valid range of values, which it depends for each of the options. Why does ICBCR such a complex space exist? It exists to encode digitally colors signals for your television. According to Michael Toombs, this was meant to cover first, they need to retain color balance between different input devices, in this case, cameras, because if the color drift between different cameras is going to be trouble. Secondly, it was meant to maintain compatibility with monochrome, that is to say, gray scale TV sets. And for these reasons, the color will, will be split into luminance and chromaticity signals. And thirdly, what not this important, we need to maintain as much efficiency as possible. Because for instance, if we take a single 1080p frame, for instance, the one for this string, and we send it with 8-bit RGB and compress, this means we need to send 170 megabytes for each frame. This is impossible nowadays, and it wasn't possible 20 years ago. So what does ICBC do, uh, CR do in this regard? It transforms your RGB pixels into three signals value that we call Y, CB, and CR. 
First, I is the luminance signal, which we see here as the grayscale plane of the image. Intuitively, our eyes are most sensitive to the green components, so that's why I contains a lot of portion of the green value of the pixels. Of course, there is a small contribution from R and B. CB and CR together form a signal that we call the chrominance signal. These two are complementary color difference signal because they arise from, in the case of CB, from blue minus luma, and CR arises from red minus luma. This whole thing that I was telling is internalized by the International Telecommunications Union into two separate recommendations. The first version that is called BT601 was last updated in 2011 and targets what we call standard definition transmission. This is less than or equal to 480p as well as the old analog TV sets. This was obviously designed for the compatibility with the legacy monochrome TV sets and targets of, of course, the D65 point. This is the matrix with three separate equations that transforms from R, G, and B to Y, C, B, and C, R. The second alternative, which has been updated into 2015, is called BT709. And this is a revised version that targets high definition as well as high dynamic range transmissions. And for these reasons, it drops legacy compatibility in exchange for an accurate luminous response that comes from measurements on our eyes. Again, this transforms the targets at D65 white point and looks like this. Now, for the range of ICBCR, its extended use was in an analog circuitry. And for this reason, in the case of 8-bit and sign integer, the y value is expected from, to range from 16 to 235, and CB and CR from 16 to 240. The extra room is allowed from the carrier sign, the analog carrier signal to over or under shoot without issues. Now, both matrices that I gave earlier, as well as the ICC, do not operate in unsigned integer, but operates in front in point. So you will be asking what is the range? And the answer is that only BT601 explains it in a very specific section of the standard. And it says that Y ranges from 0 to 1, CB and CR ranges from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. Now, for the gamma correction, ICBCR takes and return not directly the RGB signal, but a gamma corrected RGB signal. This is accounted for in the earlier equations by the apostrophe in R, G, and D. This gamma correction is formally called optoelectronic transfer function and accounts for non-linearity non on the image sensor and on the display devices that we have. And a legal signal. Now, there is little information on ICBCR's actual usage, so we can consider an alternative that stems from the old school CRT television sets. These television sets follow a power law that is uh, relates the emitted light L with the driving voltage V with that given value that is called gamma and depends on the device. The official recommendation is defined in BT1886, the last of the in 2011, and defaults to gamma equals 2.4. Now, to craft your own profiles, is it unheard of? No. For instance, obtaining a minimal sRGB profile is of interest for image practitioners, for instance, Facebook, Okay, so we need to wait for me to reload. Okay. 
yeah, let's wait for some seconds uh, to let Amy come back. Uh, we let him know that he lost connection. Okay, but we can still see the slides, so I, I can try to take over and start to explain, but I'm, <laughs> I guess I'm unable to do that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> good. Well, again, if you have questions, use the pod. Okay, good. Use the pad to ask your questions. We already got two questions in there. Um, I think focusing on the user perspective. Okay. And then wait for me to come back. Hmm. So what I can remember. Ah, okay, here we are. We are back. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think this is something uh, most of us have experienced before. So let's cross fingers that he'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, looks like he is back. Can you hear us? Okay, good. Okay, go ahead. So we were uh, how did we if why is it important to craft our own project? It is nothing that is unheard of. For instance, Facebook and the game developers are very interested in shipping minimal sRGB profiles. And El Stone has also researched a topic that we call well-behaved profiles that are meant to be to run trip, numerically stable, as well as standard co compliant profiles. What's ICBCR? It's easy to make a profile out of primaries at uh, plus a white point like RGB, but ICBCR is not one of these type of profiles. The conversion is done into two separate steps. We need to apply the matrix plus the gamma curves, and this leaves us in linear RGB, and only then we can apply the matrix plus GRC to end up in the profile connection space. Is it really possible to make a profile for our own use? Yes. The color transformation flow is like this. We go from ICBCR to and from the PCS. We need to apply the uh, color transformation matrix to end up in RGB, then linearize it with the gamma correction curves, and finally apply the uh, transformation to PCS. And of course, because ICC expects D50 and we are operating under D65, we need to use the chromatic adaptation matrix. For this reason, we will we, we'll be implementing an A to B0 plus the B to A0 color transformation pipelines. To go from ICBCR to PCS, we need to adjust the input range because of the 0 to 1 versus the minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 discrepancy that we saw earlier. We need to apply the ICBCR to our RGB matrix. In this case, we invert the one that is given in the specification. We apply the tones response curves. And finally, we apply the RGB to PCS conversion matrix. This is a fixed known matrix that you can source online. For the A to B0, expressing the uh, tone response curve is easy because it is automatically supported by this data. But for the D to B0, this is not the case. Both A to B0 support by squares curves that, it one, that we saw earlier. However, the lacquer transformation cannot represent the second segment of the auto electronic transfer function. I don't know if it was or wasn't an oversight of the IC, on the ICC part, but this means that we need to use a sample core. And this has not accounted for the fact that we must also apply the offset after and before the uh, conversion matrix, depending on the direction. So for the A to B0 version, first we need to invert the specification. Uh, RGB to YCBCR matrix, then apply the, the complete ICBCR to RGB step into a color lookup table. Then we need to apply the tone response curve that are directly go into the M element. And finally, apply the uh, RGB to profile connection space matrix in the matrix element. For the D2V0 version, all the steps can be expressed individually and this brings us significant savings in space. But unfortunately, for the need, uh, because of the need to uh, sample the uh, the electronic transfer function that we saw earlier, we need we need to lose approximately 10% of the potential uh, savings that we could have gotten if we didn't need to. For the PCS to ICBCR, the things are a fair bit simpler now. We need to apply the PCS to RGB conventional matrix, 
invert and apply the Tom's response corpse. And finally, apply the RGB to ICBCR matrix that is taken straight from the, uh, the specification. And finally, we adjust the input range. In this case, because we cannot use two matrix in uh, D2B0 and B2D0 uh, transforms, we need to clock together this adjustment with the matrix above for A2B0. But in D2B0, this fits directly inside the fourth column. For the last step, chromatic adaptations, this is a very easy step, thank goodness, because this is C5 to D50 is a very well-known transform that in particular is already used in uh, sRGB. Alternatively, a good color management model can also insert it directly into your, your profile. So for the conclusions, as you could have seen, color management is a very complex beast, a seriously complex beast, and we cover a very small primer, the uniqueness of the ICBCR color space, and how to go from the ICBCR specs into an ICC profile. You have noticed that we didn't cover the actual implementation because that would make for a whole other hour of a different talk. And for this reason, I have made available the full profile generation code on GitHub on the github.com slash amyspark slash ICBCR ICC profiles. And there are extra references at the end of these top slides. All this effort is already live on Krita Next, which is our nightly alpha build. Again, this is a nightly alpha build. We do not intend it for, to be used in production, but you are free to do it. You, if you want it, you can get a copy of Krita.org. So, thank you for watching. I am open to any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Amy, for the talk. Um, actually, yeah, it looks like a complex topic and uh, even more complex than expected in the first place. <laughs> um, I got two questions I can ask from the chat. Um, the first question is, how does uh, Krita color management compare to other graphics and image tools? So do they all have similar CMS engines? So is, it, is there something good or bad or just average? Uh, or what should I look at as uh, a user? Compared to Photoshop, for instance, we at Krita do not have access to Pantone color sets, uh, that, uh, the, the official palette, uh, palette specifications. However, we have access to a color management mul, uh, module that is uh, called Little C CMS by Marte Maria from HP. And we are currently working a lot in the, uh, in the optimizations part. It's something that we, uh, if we were using a proper proprietary module, we couldn't perhaps do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, from another point of view, we cover uh, spaces that other applications that do not have, for instance, XYZ, directly lab, which is a profile, uh, both profile connection spaces, as well as ICBCR, which is mm -hmm. directly unheard of in any other application. Okay. And second question is, I think, coming from a user perspective. So can you recommend um, some maybe good online resources or maybe step-by-step -step guides from a user's point of view to take care of all these uh, steps in color management? So not going into all the details of specifications from ICC. Is there anything you can uh, recommend or maybe people can ask you? There is a, a very good book uh, from mm -hmm. Wiley. I don't, don't recall the name, but I, I can share it in. Um, in the recap talk later. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, there is a specific session of our Krita manual at docs.krita.org. OK, good. So um, I think we are done with that. So Amy, thank you very much. I think we have a follow up um, big, blue, yep. big blue button room to yeah join you for some more time to get more questions. Maybe we can demo some stuff and people can have a look into it. That would be great as well. So uh, I think that's for now. Thank you very much. Uh, so we ended a few minutes early. That's good. Uh, I need to time, get some time to relax and understand <laughs> all, all the complex stuff. So thanks again. And hope to see you again next year, maybe with uh, next evolution and next round of updates. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>